Hi, I'm Nick Redding, Executive Director of Preservation Maryland, and today we're here with Dennis Fry, a uh, household name in historic preservation and Civil War history, former chief historian at Harpers Ferry National Historical Park, uh, and has been around at many different historic places, but we're here today at a place that's not only important to American history, but important to Dennis as well, uh, the Dunker Church. And Dennis, maybe you could just give us a sense for who were the Dunkers? I mean, the, the action that happened around here is important, but we'd like to know the people that actually made this place important before those uh, moments in 1862. Well, first of all, Nick, the Dunkers, that's a nickname. The official name of the church is German Baptist Brethren. And that tells you a lot. Uh, they are German. In fact, many of them are still speaking German, even at the time of the Civil War, though many of the Dunkers immigrated here in the 18th century. And so there's many, many Dunkers in the Antietam Valley. If you would see churches like this up and down the Antietam Valley, the Cumberland Valley, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, Shenandoah Valley, the Dunkers really settled in this region. And the reason they were known as Dunkers is because of the form of baptism that they use. Would you like me to demonstrate? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Well, actually, I'm a Dunker. I am a Dunker. The Dunkers still exist. There aren't too many of us today in the country. There's only about uh, 250,000 Dunkers in the United States, and we're still very much concentrated in this area. But you can't, you're not born into the Dunker Church. Uh, you must be baptized to join the church. And so literally you would go to a river or a creek like the Antietam Creek and an elder, they didn't have preachers at that time, it was usually an elder in the church, would come beside you and then prepare to baptize. And when you rebaptize, this is what made the Dunkers very different. And this is why they got the name Dunkers, is you would go down completely, the whole body submerged under the water in the name of the Father, then you come back up. Well, they're not done because it's the Trinity. You're baptized in the name of the Trinity. So the second time you go down in the name of the Son and you come back up, and then the third time completely under the water in the name of the Holy Spirit, and you come back up. And at that point, you're a member of the Dunker Church. So with, uh, with that Dunkering behind us, um, tell us a little bit about the building itself. When does it date from? Um, and as you said, this would have been commonplace in this valley, but how many are left like this? Well, there aren't many of these churches. This was known as a meeting house, not unlike a Quaker meeting house. They didn't refer to it as a church. Uh, you need to remember that the Dunkers are Anabaptists, so they basically rebel against uh, the high churches like the Episcopal Church and the Lutheran Church and the Catholic Church. And so this is a very simple place they would come together uh, local dunkers here in the Antietam Valley and this particular church was donated uh, this ground was donated by Samuel Mumal and so built about 10 years before the war looks just like this it was whitewashed and in fact on battle day one reason the church was so significant is because that whitewash made it stand out like a full moon with the surrounding woods a full moon in a dark night sky and it became a target for federal assaults let's go there let's go there the church was right in the middle of that tornado of destruction, human destruction. The sad thing is, not only did the church receive damage, but the Dunkers, by faith, by principled faith, are pacifists. And so what many people don't realize is that the bloodiest day in American history, fought on American soil, is fought on farmland owned by Dunkers who are pacifists certainly an interesting aspect and one of those underrepresented, often overlooked and untold stories of the Battle of Antietam. It's great to hear from you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you.